On the whole, I enjoyed The Disastrous Life of Psyche K, season 1 anyway, since that's all I watched in preparation for this video. The characters are varied, the end theme is catchy, the humor works most of the time, though as a general rule I prefer it when jokes are derived from specific situations and not the continued incompetence of our characters. Well, he's not a bad person at least. I mean, I don't think so. Okay, I take it back, he's evil. Nintendo, what do you think you're doing? Yeah, this guy. The others, I can understand. Sort of. Even if their characters are very one note. But this guy's plain annoying. Get lost, Nendo. Nevertheless, there is enough in here to recommend to most viewers, especially when you take into account the story's brilliant use of fourth wall breaking. I do realize that characters within a story being aware that they're in a story isn't that original. We've seen that done in Spider-Man and Deadpool, but those tactics are pretty much only in there for comedic effect. They don't build on or reinforce what we know about Peter and Wade as characters. Psyche is decidedly different. Here, our lead's vague awareness of the broader world beyond his own makes sense within the story itself, because he's practically all-powerful. He has premonitions, can teleport, fly, revert objects to an earlier form, read minds, he has x-ray vision, can transform his outward appearance, alter human DNA, astro-project, obliterate islands from the sky, shrink to a fraction of his former size, and he's even saved the world six times. Yet somehow, he seems to have very little control over his own life. His mind reading isn't selective, so he's constantly bombarded by the thoughts of all those around him. On top of that, he can't turn off his x-ray vision. Everyone just looks like walking muscular tissue to him. How is a person supposed to build any kind of friendship or romance with obstacles like that? Needless to say, all Psyche wants is to be left alone. He never even speaks out loud to people, ever, visually demonstrating his detachment from the world. Yet his classmates are constantly drawn to him, each for their own weird, writer-driven reasons. And Psyche's parents only make matters worse with everything they do. It is here where Psyche K can truly shine. Our protagonist is aware of the contrived situations he finds himself in. He knows he's in an anime based on a manga, an anime specifically called The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. All his powers, all his effort to pass his days in peace are negated by the show's writers stepping in and playing God. Well, this may be a small town, but hopefully it's big enough we won't see it. Oh, that place looks popular. Wanna pop in there? Yeah, if their food's that good, I can bring Kakomi sometime. They're moving the plot forward too quickly. We'd better get out of here now. Further compounding the sense of imprisonment is the show's structure. Not only does almost nothing of significance happen in each broader episode, but each is actually a compilation of five smaller episodes. There's just not room for anything major to happen. The episodes don't even stick to their established rules. You say that Psyche can't teleport out of this locked safe because the ability requires a three minute cooldown period? Well, not anymore. How about invisibility? That requires at least a minute to complete. Wait, nope. And telling me Psyche can read the thoughts of any human except Nendo because he's too dumb while also telling me he can communicate with animals is not a real explanation. Sure, Nendo's an idiot, but he's only an idiot when compared to other human beings. The rules on Psyche's fourth wall breaking are just as unclear, as we'll get moments like this. Oh yeah, I can't control this ability to see through objects just like I can't control my telepathy. To find out more, please read The Disastrous Life of Psyche K. This? The other day, I received some fan mail asking the question, if Psyche doesn't want to stand out, why is his appearance so strange? Well, here's the answer. And this. Why is today's episode so important? Because it's the season finale. Where it's as if Psyche's brain's been taken over by the writers just to prove how very helpless he is when they focus on him. It's a battle between a seemingly all-powerful being and the gods who actually have most of the power in his world. Not all of it. For the sake of everyone watching at home, I'll make myself visible to you. Sure, I had to deal with Nindo's B, C, and D along the way, but I cut those scenes for time. Anyway, this is where I wanted to go. But most of it. I was an eye in this episode. Allow me to introduce These my plot twists are giving me whiplash. I wish the writer would stop making stuff up hey, on the fly. You look kind of familiar. See the difference? Elsewhere. <sighs> what am I going to do? We find another not as attractive girl with much on her mind. How come I haven't been in any episodes lately? Chiyo Yumahara. Wait, not you two. <sighs> Maybe it's just a blip halfway through the season. Someone might have even gotten the attribution wrong on one of Psyche's lines. You jerk-ass writers! You run out of ideas or something? See, 
have to pull from a bin of old tire Who is she even talking to? You okay, Yumehara, that's enough. Psyche, please tell me! How come I haven't been on in a while? Because you haven't had anything funny to say. I can't believe it's only been six months since we met at the start of the anime series. What the hell is going on here? All these contradictory examples are popping up out of nowhere in the final season. After I already wrote out most of this crappy good for nothing... As I was saying, Psyche's fourth wall breaking isn't just a gimmick. It demonstrates both his vast power and lack thereof within the series. He knows he's in an anime. Kind of. Sometimes. Yet nothing he does changes the direction of events unless changing those events was already part of the plan. Even undesirable changes that slipped past his sadistic overseers could simply be retconned in a later episode. Continuity doesn't matter. All Psyche can really do is make things a little more difficult for the people who created him with just a bit too much power to rein in fully. Anyway, these are just some of my thoughts on this anime. Feel free to agree or disagree down below, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.